Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome to another video with me and Lavinia Stamps. Today I'm going to share with you how I created these super cute, tiny little cards. I often find it's useful to work in different sizes, sometimes small, sometimes larger pieces. I think it all helps with perspective. The great thing about working with these tiny little cards is that you can quickly create something even if you've only got 10 minutes. So the one I'm going to share with you today is this one using the gorgeous fish set. That's one of the fish in that set. I've got urchins for the bottom here. I'm using a stencil in the background. This one's elegance. I've got some splatters, my favourite colours, blues. I've got salty ocean and blueprint sketch. I'm also using bubbles here and I've got a bit of glitter and liquid pearls for some extra interest. So that was that one. Then I created one same size using the gorgeous three dancing fairy set and some of the mini foliage sets too. I've got mini dots in the background here. Really something lovely and simple, calming with love. And then I've got the inquisitive little Pippin looking at a butterfly in a green meadow. I've got a pheasant. And again, usually we use this on a much bigger card. I'm going to show you how to downsize each of these. And then every dream begins with a wish. So you can see here, I've used the smaller glow flowers from the two glow flower set. And again, a stencil in the background. And I'm using some enamel accents for my dots. So this will be next week's video. And this is today's video. Now, the reason I came upon doing them this size, which is eight centimetres by six centimetres, was I had a tiny little box in which to put them. But if you don't have a box that size, I've decided that I would wrap them in these gorgeous threads, just like that. And that way, as your stack grows, you can just keep them in like that. The ribbons and threads that I'm using are the ones from Lavinia and if you don't like blues we've got greens and there's a this one's called shabby chic it's sort of greys and silvers and then there's this gorgeous bluey greeny sort of under the sea piece. The one that I'm using is this lovely blue because you know me and blues. So there's Yes, I know, I have these just in case I wanted to do a different colourway. But I think that is actually how I'm going to store them. Because then, as I say, as my pack of them grows, voila. So, for today, six centimetres by eight centimetres, we will get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my stencil brush and my two colours. Now, most of my little cards I did in exactly the same way. And I took some ink from my Salty Ocean onto my brush, put it onto my pad to make sure that it, I don't get any heavy blobs because we just want this to be really soft, really gentle. And I'm just sweeping this stencil brush across the card. As I say, it's great working in small cards like this. You can get something done really quickly. So I've just brushed it backwards and forwards. That's it. I'm going to turn it over and using the same brush, I'm going to pick up some of the blueprint sketch and sweep it along the bottom. And I figured I wanted to do this the darker at the bottom because sometimes the depths of the ocean, it's darker down there than it is on the top. 
So again, I'm just sweeping it backwards and forwards in this lovely fluid motion. Really quite relaxing. So what I did when I did these, I did a number. I just chose the colours that I wanted to blend and made a batch up. So that's it. And then what I did was as I decided what stamps I wanted to pop onto them after I'd set them aside. Okay, then I'm going to take my stencil and as I said, I, use, I created the backgrounds in exactly the same way for all of them. I used different stencils for each of them. So I'm going to take my spritzy bottle and I'm just going to spray the surface of my stencil tap off the excess water and then I am going to flip it over you'll have seen me do this before so what we're going to land up doing is we're trapping the water between the stencil and the card and I'm just going to press it down with my damp cloth. Pick it up. And then what you're left with is this lovely, variegated design. Now to clean off my stencil, I just spritz it with a bit of water, wipe it with my cloth and pop it away. What you want to make sure is that your card is completely dry because we're going to pop glitter and ink on over it and we want it to be dry. For my stamping today, I'm going to use VersaFine Clear Twilight. You could use Nocturne, which is the black, but this is a very midnight blue, very deep blue. And I just thought it lent itself very well to the bottom of the ocean. I'm going to pick up my one fish stamp from my fish set and make sure that he is well inked. I love these two fish. They are such characters. And again, I'm keeping the darker blue to the bottom of my card. And I'm just going to pop him. Along the middle of the card there. I'm then going to take my urchins. And I'm going to ink up the whole stamp. But you'll see what I did on the original. I only stamped half of it here, left a gap, and the other side just peeking on the right hand side of the card. So I'm just going to pop this piece here. And I do like to clean the stamp off just so that I get an even coverage next time I stamp it. And then I'm going to pop this, as I said, leaving a bit of gap between the two. And old habits die hard. I like to just wipe my stamps, clean them straight afterwards. And then I know whenever I want to use them that they're completely clean. You'll see I only use water and a cloth. This is an old flannel. You know, I like to use cotton tea towels or this one. It's mostly lint free. So then you don't get the fibres in your stamps and you still get a lovely, clean, crisp image when you want it. I'm now going to take my bubbles. And I'm just going to stamp my bubbles coming out of his mouth. As you see, you can see he's such a character. So there we have him. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white pen. And I'm just going to colour the top of the bubbles. That's all. I'm also going to create a bit of 
interest dot 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 at the bottom here. You can see I'm not being too careful, not overthinking it. Dot dot dot. There we go. Before I go and put my glitter on or my liquid pearls, I'm just going to darken the edge to frame the whole piece because that brings our eye to the centre. And I'm going to use Blueprint Sketch around the edge. You can see this is a rather juicy pad. I just re-inked my pads the other day. Actually, I just might talk about re-inking my pads. When I first had the, the oxides, I thought, I don't need to buy the reinkers because I, I'll just buy a new pad. And then I realised that these were designed, these are felt pads, and they are designed for longevity. They are designed to be re-inked. So now I have bought the reinkers, and what I tend to do, this is not one, by the way, I just paint the pad across like that, turn it around, and paint the pad in that direction too. And then I just pop the lid on and I leave it overnight. That way it sinks right in and it's ready for use the next day. But you can see I've re-inked this really well. And so it's just still a bit juicy here. So I'm going to take the ink from the edge of my pad here. I still like to take a tiny piece off it to make sure that I haven't got any blobby bits. That's a technical term. Did you know that? Blobby bits. And then I am going to, in a circular motion, I'm just going to frame the edge of my little card. So you can see how quick this is. So much fun. I've got a whole pile of them ready for my next lot. So I'm keeping this sponge moving in a circular motion. That way I'm not going to get any blobs. I'm not going to get any thick, harsh marks. And you can see the difference that makes. looking quite cute. Now I'm just going to clean this up, get my pencils out and I'll come back to you. The pencils that I'm going to be using are these Van Gogh pencils. They're lovely, they're soft, they're pastel pencils and they just literally glide across the page. Now because of the colouring in the background you don't necessarily need to colour them in but you know what? I wanted to. So I'm going to use a variety of blues to just add a bit of extra interest to my urchins at the bottom of my sea. And you can see I'm not even colouring the entire shell. I'm just creating some marks. And because they are so soft, you can just use your finger to draw the colour down and that way you don't get any harsh lines and you get a variety of colours and it just blends so well. I'm not colouring the whole piece again because you want that lightness in between. So here you've got some dark colouring and here you've got the bit of white. And I'm going to leave this one completely um, colour free. There we go. So, as I say, because they're such little cards, have fun, enjoy, play. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is add my embellishments. I've got some stickles. I'm going to put that along the top of my shells. And then I've got some liquid pearls in different colours. 
purples and blues and I'm going to add them to the back of his body. And you'll see, I always take a tiny bit off. That way I know how much pressure to apply. That's it. I'm also following the lines of the shells. I don't know if you can catch that lovely glittery look here. I might even put some on the bubbles. And then I'm just going to add my liquid pearls onto the back of his body. So there we have it for today. And as I say, next week, I'm going to be showing you the gorgeous Mr. Pheasant. That's next Monday as well. Same time. I do hope you'll join me. In the meanwhile, I'm going to put my little cards to bed with their ribbons. Thanks so much for being here. I'd love to see what you make. Bye for now. <laughs>